I thought would be good for me. And I would uh, ask uh, the USIA people to see if there's anybody who wants you to broadcast. Mm -hmm. I'd go on all the television if they wanted me on. I'd go to any of the young people, even if they parade and whatever not. You've got such a good sense of humor that you can laugh them out of it. And uh, I'm not worried about what they do to you anywhere. Yes. I just, uh, I just try to get me a damn good staff and really, uh, really have a good uh, personal... Uh, uh, dignified uh, uh, trip, but try to really get some good publicity out of it. Yes, that will make you look very substantial. I'm working on these things and going at the president's request, and I wouldn't apologize for one goddamn thing. I just take the offensive on everything. Yes, sir. That's what I want to do. I just say our position is that we don't want to change NATO at all, and we'd like to stay right where we are. That we. Uh, we think every nation ought to do what it's agreed to do, and we, we're going to do it. But uh, it's pretty hard when the rest of them haven't come up for us to keep from rotating at least one division. And, and uh, uh, that we, our president doesn't believe we ought to change it at all. We don't think we ought to have an invitation to these sons of bitches to march. He doesn't forget what Khrushchev told Kennedy at Vienna. No, sir. And uh, we don't want to be encouraging them. But they do encourage them when they jump on us out in Vietnam and all that kind of stuff. And the weaker we are, the weaker NATO is, and they ought to have sense enough to know it. And if they think that, uh, that we're a bunch of country bumpkins, why, well, they're just a bunch of goddamn fools, and they better better quit attacking us. And I'd get in, I'd tell Wilson to get every goddamn back venture he's got. He's got the wildest and the radical. Yes, sir. I just talked to him about the goddamn bombing. Uh, they got in there last night, and they bombed a bunch of our people and killed them, but nobody says a word about their bombing. That's right. They stopped their bombing for a while. Put bombing the airport in Saigon. Put bombing the embassy in Saigon. Put bombing our bases every day with these Russian rockets. God damn it, if they quit bombing, we quit bombing. Well, I think I'll be able to, uh, to uh, do a bit of work on them. And uh, I just take the back venture. Just say you're not going to... You're not going to... Uh, you're not going to uh, yield to any liberalism, the goddamn one of them. But you had this same fight when you were killing fascists in Germany. Yes, sir. Europe, when you had to go over there and the Battle of Britain is on. That you had the ship steads in your state in the United States Senate. Go raise hell then. And you got them now. But it's the time to come when, you, when you've got to stand up to people who are trying to uh, provoke tyranny and then enslave folks and do it by aggression. You did it in Greece and Turkey. You did it in Berlin. You did it... Wherever it rears its ugly head, just because it's not in their backyard, there's no reason to think that, by God, they ought to be willing to let it go off in their brother-in-law's backyard. <laughs> yes, sir. Very good. Now, we'll try to get it cleared over the weekend, and uh, you tentatively... And who should I work with, or uh, there, Nick? I, I think so. I yeah. think so, or Letty. Yeah, Letty or Nick, yeah. And uh, what we're hoping is would be March the 27th, April the 8th. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, sir. Are you contemplating any of the Scandinavian or just the uh, Germany, Italy? Uh... Well, you can go anywhere you want to. I think that uh, these are bigger, and I think I'd go to the other summertime if you want to. Yeah. But uh, uh, you can go if you want to. Yeah. I would uh, dilute them a little bit. I just thought this is the big four. Yeah, that's right. Kind of makes you look a little bigger, and it kind of follows Bobby a little bit. Yeah, I got your point. If you wanted to, you could, you could low countries, but I don't believe I would. I'd go back there some other time. I'd yeah. just go with this big thing wrapping up this... Uh, this McCloy deal. Yeah. I try to locate McCloy, talk to him all about it. And yeah. I'll do that before. My general position is I don't want to give an inch, I don't want to give a soldier, I don't want to give a damn thing. I want every one of them to do what they agreed to. Yes, sir. They have done it since they want to, and since my own Congress wants to bring them all home, I'm going to just play around and rotate one division, but I'll have them. It won't mean a damn thing. I'll, I'll have them uh, in and out all the time, and my airplanes will get them there on 24-hour notice. I'll have all the other divisions there, and I hope I can keep the Congress from pulling them all out. Mm -hmm. And I can if the Germans will stand up and do their part. Well, I'll be able to talk uh, openly with Letty on this thing Monday or Tuesday then, won't I? <laughs> so that I can uh, get as uh, much uh, solid information as possible. You can do it, and you can talk to anybody. The damn trouble your staff gets stuff out. I've been reading about this Democratic Party, what all ever colonists in the country, and they just got the damn this crazy stuff, not just Alan, but you got Mary Ann Mead. 
Oh, I know. I read all about that. That that Allen stuff. Nobody in God's green earth has talked to him. That. Oh, but uh, they they talk. They pick it up from others, and they do talk because I never did tell anybody about it but you. And then, goddamn, I started reading about it for months. When you tell one of your little boys, it, it's true. Every vice president has the same problem. They feel that their man is a. Uh, uh, been overlooked, and when they get a goddamn inch, they take a mile, and they got they've got enough sense to know if they leave it up to you, you'll make the mile and do it in a hell of a way if they just don't uh, uh, bomb in and torpedo you in route. Now what I would do is uh, when we make the announcement, what I'd be quietly doing is stay away from the goddamn columnists and the papers and trying to blow yourself up to uh, uh, Evans and Novak or them. They'll gut you anyway. Then I'd get me a damn good outfit, and I'd get me some damn good speeches, and I would make a hit with the television and radio and stuff over there, and I would take a good group with me, on, if you want to, uh, in your own uh, plane, you'll go on one of the big planes, and uh, I would uh, I would be pretty reserved and dignified. Now, the best, best presence you have is when you're not too friendly and not too forthcoming, and a little bit reserved and a little bit judicious. I never saw you better than I did today. And it's just because you were last and because you didn't want to keep them and because you didn't get your hockey hot. Yeah. You didn't get all worked up. You just were very judicious. Now, that's the way I treat this goddamn press. And I'd make them look like you were a big man and a judicious man and a statesman. And you're not going to be worried about these little nitpickers that go around uh, with peace feelers. And I would never refer to them. And when they referred to me, I'd just smile and go on otherwise. But I would be the man that uh, was very interested in keeping this alliance together and preserving what could have been a hell of a bad situation. And our own Congress and Mansfield and the whole committee and Russell and all, the, all of them were unanimous to bring the boys home. Now, we have averted that. We have avoided it. But we got to let you know that... Uh, British, you ought to tell the British that they, they just can't completely abandon their responsibilities in the world and run out. We know they got problems, but uh, all they've done to me since they've been president is send Douglas Hume over here, and he talked about what he had to do for Cuba. Then they sent Wilson over here, and he had to tell me he wanted a Nobel Prize, and they called up in the middle of the night. Then, by God, he, he says he can't do anything that, unless we give him the money to do it. And the next day, he lends $40 million to Cuba. And... Uh, uh, we back him on all of his international monetary matters, and then he lectures us about not keeping him fully informed on everything, and he gives out a damn fool statement that he's just an inch away from peace. Just the slightest little turn, he'd had peace. And that's a lot of bullshit. Anybody read the Pope's letter knows it. Yeah. He's beating people. Now, we like him. We're for him. Yeah. But he ought to be lecturing us, and I wrote him a wire. I told him that, by God, I couldn't give him a power of attorney to show his ass. Yeah, I know, I know uh, that's the picture. We like him. We're for him. We're always going to be with the Britain. But he's got to understand, I've got a hell of a lot worse problems than he had. That's right. And he got in bed now. That's for sure. How many mothers he got calling on him? Well, if he can't hold it, by God, over there, if he, he's not he's not very strong. Now, by God, Churchill took the Battle of Britain, and he took it, waiting on us. By God, if this guy can't take it, when he can't hear a sound, he can't get a seismograph and find one goddamn earthquake rumble in London. Mm -hmm. uh, he hadn't got a man there. We're paying all the bills. We're losing all the lives. And by God, he's got the shimmies. Mm -hmm. So he just got to quit go squat like Ed Lee Stevenson and wet somewhere and then put on his bloomers and come on back and tie himself if he's going to uh, blow. Well, I'll do some work on him. I think I can be helpful there, Mr. President. Tell Brand and tell Kissinger, too, that we love them. In Germany, we put them number one. If they, I'm, I'm the most pro-German president any president ever had. But by God, that man can't be president very long if uh, the chancellor says that he's in complicity, guilty of complicity with the Russians. Yeah. They're not conferring. I've given the goddamn Germans more time. Willie Brand hadn't even gotten out of my door when this damn fellow was saying that. Yeah, I know that. Old George McGee's camped over here on behalf of the Germans. Old Earhart came before my damn ink was dry on, on my old. And I took him home with me at Christmas. And I just had him constantly. And then for him to say we haven't conferred, I had this damn the, this armament man, Bill, whatever his name is. Bill Foster. Bill Foster, he was over there then. Yeah. To see him. Yeah. We stuck their nose up our ass for, for every day for months. And by God, he's out talking about me being in complicity with this. 
with the Russians. I haven't made a damn agreement with the Russians. I'm going to check everything with him. But he better learn to quit trying to call his name through the newspapers. Because I know how to call him a goddamn square-headed son of a bitch in more languages than he can. I just got more manners. Yeah. And I mean, that's what you got to tell. Just say, if you want to cuss each other out through the newspaper, I got this guy. He's a... He's a mountaineer. He knows how to do it. He can call you a shit-ass seven different ways without ever using the word complicity. Yes, sir. But, uh, he doesn't want to do it because he likes you. But this is no way to try our case in the newspaper. Well, I hope that I can do some good. Okay, bud. I'll see you at night. I'll see you at night, Mr. President. Do you think we had a good meeting today? I thought it was tremendous, and I and they thought so, too. And uh, the, uh, the little uh, uh, talk you gave them just before we went to lunch, just nailed it down because they were working on us. There's no doubt about that. And that just finished it off right good. Well, Volk said I misunderstood him. Yeah. He didn't mean to get argumentative at all. Said he was just trying to be helpful. Well, he's a pretty decent fellow. He isn't really a mean, nasty guy, but he was a part of the... Uh, Romney and Re Reagan had already gotten together before they got in there what they were going to do. Uh, our friend Nelson Rockefeller behaved very well. Yeah, but I told old Romney that uh, how foolish it was if I got to be jumping on our own people and trying to win here what they couldn't win out there. Yeah. I think I sobered him up a little. Yes, sir. It was a good meeting, and Ferris Bryant deserves a great deal of credit for getting that gang in. Okay, partner. You bet. Thank you. Bye.